had it not been for the project, I don't know that I would have been able to implement those things. I would have been sitting there for months and weeks trying to figure out the most perfect plan possible instead of saying, hey, let's start here. We got to do something. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over time, making it better, which is what we ended up doing. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine entrepreneur and instructor of the project. Welcome to the MDK Project Show. That's the modern day night project show. This is a show about men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith, where they have meaningful breakthroughs in their finances, their family, so that they become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, and men. And this occurs through physical, mental, and emotional hardship and sacrifice so they can become even better men. And I wanna to welcome today James Swift, a graduate of class 004 of the project. What's up, Freak? Thanks What's for joining on? us on the show. Just introduce the people to yourself and just let us know where you're from, what you do. Yeah, uh, my name's James Swift. I'm the owner of Ranch Cordova Fit Body Boot Camp in uh, Ranch Cordova, which is a, a suburb of Sacramento uh, in, in Northern California. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's what awesome. I do. Awesome, good, good stuff. So let's get right to it, the, the project. When you first heard about the project or it came up on social media, how'd you first hear about the project? Uh, so as a Fit Body Bootcamp owner, uh, Bedros Koulian's our CEO, he's our, he's our leader, um, and I've heard him you know, talking about the project for quite a bit. Um, and you know, I, I would follow along, I'd see the videos on, uh, on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and just there's, there was always that, that level of, of curiosity. So, um, yeah, so it's just following Bedros and, and seeing the, the videos pop up. So once you saw the videos and there's some fun looking stuff, some off the wall stuff, some crazy shit going on there, what was it about it when you saw the videos, maybe read up on a little more, did some research that that spoke to you, that resonated with you, where you said, you know what, this is something I need to get involved with at this point in life. What was it? Well, you know, um, it was, I've always been the type to want to tackle physical challenges. That was a, a big piece for me. Uh, you know, that was, I guess, the 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 hook, the, the intriguing part. Um, but, you know, when I would hear things like, do you want to level up in life? Do you want to make a greater impact? Do you feel like you were meant for more? Um, that that was what spoke to me because I always felt that you know I would always get to a certain point and I would just kind of hit this invisible ceiling to a certain degree, or maybe I just didn't believe in my ability to to do those things, and uh, and you know I felt that you know with Bedros, Bedros, someone I trust a lot. And so I felt, well, this, this was something that I just need to be a part of to, to see if I was as tough, strong, tough as I thought I was. You wanted to find out who you really were, what you were made of, what you were capable of, what was your true potential, maybe you never been tested in that way before? Is that yeah, kind of and, and what was stopping me? You know, something was stopping me, but I, I just couldn't figure it out on my own. Uh, I, kn I knew I needed some help. What, what made you think or feel that something was stopping you or that you even needed help? What were some struggles you were going through or what were some of the things you were looking to achieve out of going through the project? Where were you at at that point? Well, you know, um, I'd say from from relationship standpoint, I was uh, the, the prover proverbial nice guy. You know, I was uh, always the one that would you know, keep my mouth shut. You know, I didn't want to cause waves. I would avoid confrontation and that really, um, that really like impacted my relationships and mm -hmm. deep down inside, I would be frustrated with myself because I didn't speak up. I didn't say what I needed to say. And, you know, I would avoid those, those short-term conflicts. Um, but I knew it was causing me a lot of long-term stress. And, and that was something that, um, that I just got frustrated with. I couldn't, I couldn't live with that anymore. So you used to be kind of quiet, maybe not respond to things and hold it in a little bit. And now the project will turn you into just a, a, a loud mouth, obnoxious dickhead is basically what it said. If you want to be just like me, come and join the project. We will hook you up. But in, in all seriousness, then 
f- from that point, you, you made the decision to join the project. What were some of your fears, hesitations that you might have had? What were, you know, once you made that commitment or even before you made the commitment, what were things going through your head that, you know, questioning yourself about it or discussions you might have had with your wife about it? Or where, how was that whole build up to the actual first getting registered for it and then, you know, preparing for it? Does everything that happened before or just tell me about it? Yeah, I mean, there's there's always a level of fear that comes along with the unknown, right? Not knowing what we would really be going through. Um, and it's always nice to, to lay in my nice, comfortable, warm bed, scrolling through Facebook and go, oh, that sure looks like fun to crawl, mm-hmm. army crawl through some mud and dirt. And, it's Marine Crawl, you know, but no one's kidding. Yeah, Marine. <laughs> yeah, People have died for the last time to that shit again. <laughs> marine crawling uh, through, you know, through what looks tough. But, um, you know, so there's always that fear of the unknown. But, um, but I also knew that there were probably things in my past that I didn't want to tackle, um, but I needed to tackle. Uh, and so I knew from other people that had gone through the project that those things would surface. Um, and there was a small part of me that wasn't sure if I was ready to tackle those things. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, you know, there, there's a financial investment. Uh, and at the time, we were a year and a half into opening our business. Um, you know, we weren't viable financially just because of, you know, the being a year and a half in business. Um, and so making an investment, you're always concerned, am I going to get the return on investment? Um, and that's always, that's always a fear. Um, and so that, those were probably the main things that, that crossed through my mind as uh, I was getting ready for the project was, you know, the fear of the unknown, the fear of tackling things that I didn't know if I was emotionally ready to, ta- to tackle, and then making a, a, you know, a good investment in my own personal development and whether I would see the return on that investment. So you were a year and a half into business in, in the fitness industry. That's, that's a in the fitness industry, there's years and years of growth just to even sometimes get profitable. So that's a, a bold move on your part to invest $12,000 in yourself on, you know, so soon on. How did you get over that? You know, let's get a little talk a little more on that. How did you get over that? Like, you're so soon in your business and what did your wife think about that? You know, you're starting a franchise, Fit Body Bootcamp franchise. Mm-hmm. How'd you get beyond that just thought of, of getting past that financial stress? Well, you know, um, we... Uh, since joining Fit Body Bootcamp, Bedros is huge on personal development. So um, we were, uh, my wife and I, we were on a personal development journey ourselves. Um, you know, and she had done, gone through and invested. We'd invested in some life coaching for her to help her break past some barriers. Um, it wasn't as large of an investment, um, but we had made that investment. Um, but we knew that deep down inside, if if I could become a better leader, which is something that I never had to do. I never had to lead people. I I was a productive worker. I was someone that would go in um, and what I'm really good at is putting my head down and getting to work. Mm -hmm. But communicating with people, leading people, um, you know, help having them see my vision was not something that I was used to doing. Um, So we knew that if, uh, if I could push past that barrier, if I could become a better leader, then we would be able to grow our business exponentially at that point. Um, and that was probably one thing that uh, I was struggling with was, you know, conflict, tough, uh, tough conversations with team members, uh, being able to not sugarcoat everything, which I'm extremely good at. Hmm. And uh, I needed to stop sugarcoating things and be more direct and be a leader and not someone that was just coddling people. That's awesome stuff that you're even, you know, you had the self-awareness to figure that out and realize you need to do something about it to go to the next level, to take, make the business profitable. And one of the things that I heard you say that, which was awesome is that your wife was also either before you did the project or even at the same time to work on her own personal development, to make herself even better. Is she in the business with you? She is now. So since completing the project, um, you know, I've, I always kind of kept her, uh, I'd say at arm's length, you know, in the sense of the business, because when I started the business in the back of my mind, there was always that fear of failure. And I thought, well, 
if I financially destruct, then she, mm-hmm. if, if she's not part of it, then she won't be impacted. That was my rationale. Um, but since joining the project um, and getting going through and kind of breaking down some of those barriers, I realized that it was more of a control problem that I had. And, you know, um, the fear of taking someone else's input and her input uh, instead of allowing her to help us grow the business. So uh, since completing the project, we, we've we had, you know, multiple discussions. And that, that was, I guess, another part is I really struggled with having difficult conversations with her. Um, and it the project really allowed me to start speaking up for myself from, from an emotional standpoint, but then allowing us to really set boundaries when it comes to the business and saying, Hey, okay, we're going to talk about the business. Mm. We can't, we can't allow our, our emotions as a couple to get into the mix. So where you were at before the project, it almost would have been impossible for her to even come into the business as you, as the limiting factor, because correct your communication skills. And if you're having some communication issues personally, how could you possibly then compound that professionally it would just be an implosion. So you wouldn't Correct. even be able to do that. that. That's awesome that you did that after. I, I knew she was in the business, but I didn't realize that she only became in the business afterwards. So that was kind of what allowed that to happen is after you joined the project, you became better communicator is what it sounds like, right? Exactly. Yeah. I was able to communicate with her a lot more. Um, and you know, yeah. And it just, it's all it's done is just, uh, improved our relationship. And you probably even thought before the project that a lot of people think it's not possible to be in business with their spouse. They're like, the way I see it, I've been in business with my wife. She's, we've been in business since before we even got married. Like we, that's just how it's been. And I, I see it as in people say, oh, how could I, I, how could I work with my spouse? I'm with them all day at home. Like motherfucker, if you can't deal with that person for only a certain amount of time, you shouldn't have got that. You maybe you didn't pick the right one. I don't know. Right. <laughs> maybe like if you're, if you can't stand to be around them for a few hours a day and you can't even function and have an adult conversation. Like you either need to get your shit together because you're the limiting factor or, you know, reevaluate that situation. So that's awesome. You were able to come to that conclusion and, and how is it going now with both of you in the business, like, and affecting you personally, are you able to make that happen? How, how's it going? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. I mean, um, it was, it's much better than, than I've ever imagined that it would be, you know? And yeah, you'd always hear like, you don't mix blood with business, family with business, you know, that kind of stuff. And, and I find, I found that it was just, you can't do that if you can't communicate. Um, but if you can communicate and you can set boundaries, um, then you can absolutely mix the two and, and see uh, great success. Um, and that's what we found. I mean, she still has her, her own, you know, nine to five job, but she's, uh, you know, she, since she's gotten certified, she coaches some sessions. She helps me with some, some marketing and some, uh, some hiring, mm-hmm. that type of stuff. So it's been, um, yeah, it's, it's really now she is in the business and not just make it success, but probably even more successful. If you had say whatever she's doing in the business, if you just hired someone else and was doing that stuff, it's not even close. Cause now you could come and do something like come back. Like you're here as a junior instructor for the project, take a week away from work. What a, a relief, almost a freedom knowing that your business partner is your spouse, right? You can leave there and not even have to worry about it at all. Like not even think about it, knowing that she's part of the business and she's going to have, you know, take care of things and have that trust in her that she could do it. Like that's, that's empowering. That's like a force multiplier. When you, I think when you can go into business with your spouse, that's a force multiplier. Like you have that partner in, not just in the business, but also in life, like they got your back. So you don't have to worry about, are they going to go and look for a different career or something like they're, they're in that. So that's, that's awesome that you're able to put that together. Yeah. Power couple. You know, as, as, as I always like to see, you know, and that, that's what I feel like we are is just, we're now a power couple, you know, for the last year. And the other thing that stood out that I, that I heard you say was again, how she was on the personal development as you were going, because what we see happen a lot of times, um, uh, even, you know, graduates of the project, they'll struggle with that. They'll go on their own personal development or anyone that hires a coach or starts going to workshops, starts reading personal development books. They start leveling up, but their spouse or whatever else is not on that journey with them. So they're not loving up. So they start eventually such a big gap in between them that they're not even speaking the same language. So that the fact that you two were leveling up at the first, at the same time is what made it such a smooth transition for you. It seems like, like, I think that's a huge lesson is if you're working on your own personal development, you need to, it's like an absolute must bring your spouse, partner, your goat, whatever the fuck you're into, bring them along <laughs> on the ride with you because 
You're speaking the same language when you meet. Now you start going to workshops, you join the project, you hire a coach and you're just here and you're developing, reading all these books and they're down here wanting to just sit and watch Netflix and eat fucking ice cream. That's that You're speaking a different language. Now you're speaking English and they're speaking Russian and it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to communicate. So that's awesome that you did it together and that's the right way to do it. Like take them along on the ride with you or else it's just impossible to make it happen. Good stuff. So let's jump into the project. That's kind of what led up to it. That was kind of the before. Let's talk about the fun stuff, the good stuff during the project. Share with me one of your least favorite experiences, evolutions, tasks you had to do, your least favorite moments of those actual 75 hours in the project. There was probably one least moment, uh, least favorite moment of the project. It certainly um, couldn't have involved me. I'm sure, <laughs> sure of it. <laughs> I loved you throughout. I, I mean, I loved the energy that you brought. That That was great. I mean, it was shitty sometimes, but... You know, it, it was fantastic. Um, actually said that you were my favorite instructor throughout the, the whole time. But, uh, I'll pay you that five bucks later. Yeah, for that. yeah I got you. Um, but the dash. So uh, digging our own graves, laying in that body bag, actually having dirt thrown on our faces. That, that, was, that was probably the only time during the project I thought I may quit. Um, that was, um, it was, uh, it was something that I was not anticipating being zipped up in that body bag and, and trying to find air somewhere and, and, you know, trying to control my breathing and the unknown of how long we were going to be down there for, um, it was, uh, it was, it was a very, um, enlightening experience so know? more it sounds like more physically and emotionally you were ready to that was what was making you even consider it not physically it's not like you were gasping for air and had to tear yourself out and that's mm -hmm. why you were going to quit before you even got to that point you were already thinking about i'm going to be gasping for air or how long is it going to take so it was in your head is what you're saying it was in my head yeah yeah it was uh yeah it was definitely my least favorite for sure um but you know it was uh yeah everything else was fine I mean, you know, it's it sucked oh, into its own. That. It, it, else sucked, is fine. it sucked in its own special Every, way, but we'll have to step up our game. Zero zero eight, you are fucked. <laughs> fuck, fuck, thanks, James Swift. For what's about to happen? In zero zero eight, I'm here to help you guys. So he will be here, junior instructor, and thank, thank, appreciate you coming out for taking a week away from your life to come and help us out with that. So, so the dash was your least favorite, and the rest, what was, what were some of the standout? The, the where you just were like, you know what, this is fun. This is like a Privil other people might think this sucks, but this is just a privilege to be going through this right now. This is just fucking awesome. What were some of your more favorite moments, evolution, stories, whatever that you were going through? Uh, the pugil sticks. I, I really enjoyed um, beating the shit out of each other with the pugil sticks. It was, um, it was difficult, but you know, I felt like that was something that I've always enjoyed is anything that had to do with physical... Uh, physical confrontation, like not a problem. Um, of course, because you're a shitty communicator. Like, right. fuck it, let's, let's just <laughs> let fight me and just call. beat the shit out of you. Just yeah, fight and call a day. I'm going to whoop your ass. You're going to whoop my ass. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to talk about the emotions no and emotions. all this other bullshit. Yeah, yeah. Just fucking fight and call a day. Right. <laughs> I like it. I like that yeah. strategy. Fighting solves everything. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. The future sticks. Yeah, there's, there's so, something about sinking in a good clean hit on someone, but not just that. Also, there's something about getting your getting head rocked. just knocked and Maybe even you fall down, maybe even lose, but then realizing, you know what? I'm fucking getting back up and I'm going to keep marching on. I'm not fucking dead. I'm not, you know, seriously injured. Like you could take a licking and, and keep rolling and keep moving and not just be a little bitch and just, just give up. There's just some, something empowering to that about just trading blows with another, another fucking human. Yeah. Fighting for life. You know, I mean, every day we, we have the opportunity to, to fight for life. And, you know, and that was, uh, that was something with the, the pugil sticks. And, and I guess, like you said, you know, being able to, to beat the shit out of someone that you care about, you know, in the nicest way possible, of course. Um, but then being able to just shake hands, and be like, Hey, good job. Yeah. You know, that was a good time. That's awesome. That's, that's a good, that's just a deep level of bonding and respect and just growth on so many levels. That's awesome. People think that pugil sticks are just for the hell of it. Like there's so much, going on there, you know, respect and bonding and challenges and overcoming fears and things like that. So much going on with that. And now that I'm thinking about it, you just gave me a flashback from your class. You were in the Corona class, right? Correct. So you 
during your class, you didn't even realize that during your class, the world had fucking shut down. Like you were right in the middle of that March, like whatever, 13th, whenever the hell it was, where the world just shut down. You didn't even know about it. No. And... Well, lot, we knew a little bit. We knew a little bit because because uh, uh, Matt would come in and he'd tell us, "Hey, it, there's a pandemic going on," and we're like, what "The fuck are you talking about?" Of course, we're dead tired at this point and probably not completely processing. But then, I think the next day he came in, and he said, "Yeah, they canceled the NBA season," the NBA, and yeah. we're like, "What the fuck?" Like that was that was just mind blowing to us. But of course. Yeah, think there's how, nothing we think can how do. cool that is, though, that you're si- you're sitting there. Imagine there was just chaos and riots and the world is on fire, but you're in there in this, your own world, like, becoming better still and still learning and focused and, like, there's something to that. Like, when shit's going yeah. on in the world, to realize that it doesn't have to affect you. Like, the only reason stuff affects would have affected you because you would have known about it. Like, you could outpower that stuff by controlling your own day and your own agenda and what you're focusing on, like, you didn't even know that the world shut down. Like, think about that. The world shut yeah. down and you're just kicking on, like having a blast, having fun, beating the fuck out of people and people just fix. <laughs> like there's some, there's a, there's a lesson in there. There's something powerful to that, to be able to shut down the bullshit in the world and not let it affect you, even though you, you know, you didn't even know that it was going on. But the thing I was getting at was that when you mentioned the, 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 the burial, your class, I don't remember. So in March, I guess that's a time that, the earth is just not very forgiving because usually it'll take an hour or two t- for the class to dig their graves and you're only class zero zero four so by then we still are figuring out what the, we don't we still don't know what the fuck we're doing like we're, we're figuring out as we go we're making we're making it better every time we're always constantly tweaking and improving we analyze every single bit of it attention to detail in every single part but i remember your group was there and we had to go set some stuff up in the background we, we had the junior instructors there but we still were helping set things up you guys were about an hour, hour and a half into it. It was pretty cold at night. There's like the middle of the night. It's getting pretty cold out there. We're standing there watching you, making sure it's deep enough and it's just not going anywhere. We're like, well, yeah, like it took us two hours to get like six inches down. <laughs> we, we, I remember we took off to go get some stuff set up for what you had coming up next. We came back like over an hour later and we thought for sure you're all just going to be sitting there like with your on strike, like we're, we're done digging. You motherfuckers were, I don't even know, three, four hours. We come back and you're just hitting, your, your shovels are hitting like rocks, rock, like <laughs> bedrock. There's like sparks fucking flying out. And you savages just kept digging and digging and digging. And at that point, I'm pretty sure after that, I don't think we, I don't think any of you, we lost any of you after that, that part, that section. I don't think so. Yeah, uh, I think one. I think we lost one, but that was. The, but yeah. we we came back and saw the way that you guys were just like it was hours, and you made it like this this deep. <laughs> it was like, we're like we're going to be here all fucking day. We're not going to get anything else done because we had to let you dig deep enough to bury yourself. Or you're not going to get the effect. You motherfuckers were just hacking away for. So, it was crazy. Like we we respected the the work you guys were putting in just on the digging. Like we, we literally left you guys for over an hour after you were already like an hour and a half into it and you're just chopping away, chopping away. And then you were there for like another hour after that, right. just to barely get low enough to get your shoulders in there. But that was awesome. I just had a, a, a thought about that. That was some, some good work there. Probably that's why you were ready to go after you're done digging your, your <laughs> hole. You're like, you know what? Fuck this shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I didn't come here to dig for five I'm hours. Die. I'm good. Fuck. I'm out of here good stuff so that, that was some of your standouts the pewter sticks anything else that stands out throughout the experience uh things that i enjoyed yeah, yeah. oh uh or funny stories i mean yeah, i mean things i enjoyed you know the the ball you know when you're when you're throwing the tennis ball we had to go and fetch the tennis ball it was like i forget what what that was called but it, it was like a uh uh, that wasn't even a plan evolution. We just found a ball. We said, here, yeah, fucking go just it. go get Let it. You get Bring it back out. to me. Yeah, yeah. And, and you thought there was some deep. Now, there is a, a lesson to everything. Were you were the group? No, you weren't the group. That was class. Maybe it was your group. One of the groups. Like, there's a lesson to everything, right? Sometimes yeah. you need to be a leader. Sometimes a follower. Sometimes work as a team. Sometimes you do, you do need to figure shit out on your own, right? And being an individual. There's a time for everything. Was it your group? We threw the fucking ball, and they thought it was a test, like really this, this, that was a chance that we were like, the whole purpose of that ball is to let you now just unleash, go after it. There's no team, like try to be the winner. Cause there is yeah, a time yeah. that you want to win. That's really one of the lessons there with that. One of the group, groups, I have to think about who it was. Uh, maybe it wasn't yours. They thought that, you know, cause we're always talking about work as a team, be united, a cohesive unit. 
finally want you to break out when we're doing that ball ball drill uh-huh. to someone be to like fight for the win, fight for the victory. It's okay to, you know, even though you're your your brothers to have a little competition amongst you. One group came back and it's just a tennis ball, a regular size fucking tennis ball. One group, there was eight or nine of them left at that point that you came back with the ball and they thought it was a teamwork drill and they're <laughs> all holding the ball. They each have two fucking fingers and they're trotting along holding the ball. I'm like, you dumb motherfuckers. This is not a test. One of you come back with it. And they're like, nope, you're not going to get us. That we're, was not us. We're a team. There's eight fucking grown men running through a park with two little fingers pinching on the nut, like a, like a, it's in a nut sack, running over to us. I'm like, oh my God, what did we do to these fucking guys? Holy nah, shit. No, that was not us. We were, I we were throwing out that elbows. Was. That's, a, and... that's a true fucking story. Like, yeah. I got to think of what group it was and it wasn't you. Like we finally want them to unleash the beast and like go for the victory be the vi- the sole victor because sometimes you have to stand out and stand ab- above everyone else they're like nope we're gonna trot and hold the fucking ball it was it was some cute. funny shit yeah That's it was cute. cute it was cute i'm sure ed has it on video we have, to, we have to find that video i'm sure we got it somewhere that, that we gotta put that in their highlight reels we won't sell another fucking project they see eight fucking big ass brutes prancing wrong like little bitches holding the fucking ball we won't sell shit ever again no one will ever the project will be done if we put that video out there i shouldn't even be talking about it ed we're gonna have to cut this part out because we just fucked the whole project up from that group that did that We'll just we just need to put that up in the in the Facebook group. Yeah, so we yeah. Can all. But I do want to see that video, and I want to know who it was that did that. I got to remember it was fucking funny. All right, so we we kind of talked about what led you up to the project. We talked about your experience during it. Let's talk about after graduation. So you made the graduation. What were some of the immediate like? There's some lessons now that now that you're learning. It's almost. A, over a year now for you, right? Yeah, year and yeah, a half yeah. almost. Yeah. yeah, March. So shit, yeah. year and a half almost. Like we're getting on it, whatever. So you're getting some new lessons probably now. Are still just kicking in, and you're still just keep growing and evolving. But what were some of the immediate take home tangible lessons, like marching orders that your feet hit the ground at home, and you're like, all right, now I'm already operating on a different level. What were some of the ways you were already different at that point? Like a um, Uh, A couple things. So we talked about the communication piece. So I really went home um, and and really worked on being a better communicator, uh, over communicating as opposed to what I'm used to doing, which is under communicating. Um, How long after graduation did your wife enter into the business? uh, That still took, gosh, six months. Okay. Yeah, that was that was probably a slower part um, because we had, you know, like I said, we had some. There were still some things, I, and I was talking with uh, with Chris out there. It wasn't a 180 change, you know. It was something that I progressed into being more vocal and sharing my feelings. So you had to work and, on yourself, then you had to work on your relationship with your wife, and then right now that I'm semi unfucked, our communication personally is semi unfucked. Now it's at a good enough point that all right, now we can enter into the business. Kind of like right. the path that went. You got it. That that's awesome. That's like so. That's exactly what we're talking about. Like the immediate impact and then the longer term impact. Like that was six months later. That's a perfect example of the effects of the project even down the road. And and six months from now, six years from now, something will happen that was literally in a in a effect from your 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 experience in the project i'm guessing oh yeah absolutely um i mean there's there's been a ton of growth in this last year and a lot of it accelerated because of covid and and everything like that um but the the other part was decision making so you know we come out of the project on a saturday the following wednesday we shut down our gym you know we had to close our doors Mm. for two weeks or whatever it was supposed to be um, and so we, we had to immediately pivot and figure out how we're going to service our members. Because again, we're a year and a half in business. It's like, we weren't, Jeez, that's, you know, we weren't successful by, by any stretch. Mm-hmm. Uh, we were still on our growth path. And so, uh, we couldn't go backwards too far because then we would be done. And so it was, um, I, I'm an analyzer by nature which leads to really long, drawn out decision-making processes. And so uh, one of the things that that we learned um, was to make a decision and then just be ready to pivot whenever we need to. If it's not the right decision, then figure it out and pivot the the next Mm -hmm. way. Um, And so uh, that was that was a big thing. So luckily, you know, being that that Bedros is is our CEO, he you know he laid out a plan you know along with like Matt, uh, Aaron, and they said, hey, this is 
this is what you guys need to do. But that's for all encompassing fit bodies and not all of that fits into right. what we can, what everybody can do. So we have to pull pieces from that plan and then implement them in our location. So that was, um, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for the project because, uh, had it not been for the project, I don't know that I would have been able to implement those things. I would have been sitting there for months and weeks trying to figure out the most perfect plan possible instead of saying, hey, let's start here. We got to do something. And then, mm -hmm. uh, you know, over time, making it better, which is what we ended up doing. So where, do you, where would you see your business now? So it's a year later, the shit, shit is, things are still not even fully opened up right. here in California. It's still a shit show. Uh, so where would, if you didn't go through the project, so a brand new business, year and a half, that's bad enough, no matter what industry you're in, right? You're right. still in the, you know, still trying to make a profit pretty much and just still just growing in a growth phase. Put on top of that, the fitness industry, which is a, just a tough industry in general. And then on top of that, the Corona hits at the exact same time. Where would you see yourself now if you hadn't have gone through the project? Where would your, your gym be right now? We'd probably be closed. I mean, to, to be frank. Um, we, I, I don't know. And that's, that's the tough thing. You know, I don't know, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, what I can say is even today we've doubled our staff, um, revenue wise, we're essentially where we were at last year, um, when we had to close our doors, which wasn't great, but actually we make a little bit more, but I mean, being that their businesses that had closed are still down 40, 50%, um, and you know, I feel like we're thriving with, uh, with a great team, um, of, of coaches and a great staff that, that really cares and, and we're continually growing. Um, I can see ourselves in a, in an amazing position by the end of this year. That's um, awesome. and that's, you know, I, not a lot of businesses can say that today. So, um, so I, I you know, I, I don't think that we would be here. Um, I think we would be closed, you know, to be frank. That's some that's some deep stuff. That's that's fucking awesome. Like, so you wouldn't have been able to withstand the storm and hold the team together, and still, like, now a year later, a year of shutdown, you're still at least where you were, even improved from where you were. Which that's you're in the top one percent of gyms and fitness industry that aren't able to say that. So, had it not been for the leadership lessons you learned in the project, the communication, decision making, like that's been a huge impact on making that happen. It sounds like. Yeah, and the and the brotherhood. I mean, you're you're surrounded by by high level individuals, you know, um, being able to come back to, to the project and give back as a junior instructor to, you know, to check in and, and see all the great things that all of our, our other brothers are doing. It just makes you say you can do more, mm -hmm. you know, uh, instead of looking at, let's say the average people, that are kind of walking around the world that are just kind of putting in average or minimal effort. Um, you know, everybody is, is their goal is to kill it every single day. Um, and having that to, to push you, um, and that standard to have to live by and not have to live by, but want to live by, uh, it just, you know, uh, there, there's a level of pride. There's a level of, of, uh, accomplishment. There's, you know, you, you want to make your brothers proud. Speaking of brother, the brotherhood, did you realize when you were going through the project that something like that existed afterwards? Or did you just think, all right, I'm going to go get some motivation, get on fire, and then it's going to be just up to me on my own from that point? Did you realize there wasn't, there was an ongoing, literally a, an ongoing lifelong brotherhood with, with all the other graduates and instructors and that, those type of connections and camaraderie? Did you realize that? When you I, were I didn't. No. Um, you know, that was... Um, I mean, you know, I knew that there were, because, you know, there were from the, the first few classes, there were some other Fit Body Bootcamp owners. So I always felt, oh, you know, like we would have something in common, you know, between like Lucky and, um, and CJ. And, and there's a, a few uh, other Fit Body owners that have gone through the project. Um, you know, I always felt, oh, you know, we would have a connection, but I didn't realize that we would have this network of, uh, of high level individuals in all facets, different industries, um, that we could lean on, um, for, for assistance or ideas. Um, and, and I think that that's, that's really, uh, helped out a lot. So the being part of the brotherhood has been part of the process throughout this last year. It's not just the project itself to help you get through this 
fucking crazy Corona time, it was the being part of that brotherhood and having that support system and camaraderie and other men to, to lean on for help or a time you needed just to talk to someone or time to be vulnerable or whatever it is. Was that part of the process of what helped you get through this crazy year? Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, there, there's a level of accountability. There's a level of support. So, uh, like even Brent, um, I didn't mention Brent, he's another fit body owner. He checks in with me. If he kind of sees me kind of MIA, Hey, how's it mm -hmm. going? You know, how you doing? We talked a little bit and, you know, just being able to, to, you know, talk and, and release that information with other people that understand it's, um, it's been extremely beneficial uh, throughout the process. So yeah, that support system, that accountability, um, you know, it, it's been, it, it, otherwise I would have went home three, four, five, six, seven weeks later, you know, you, you would have easily fallen into the old habits. I mean, that we see that, I see that in the fitness industry all the time, right? It's like six week challenge. I'm going to, you know, eat really well and be healthy. Yeah. And then, you know, if they don't stay on, and they don't continue the membership and they don't uh, continue with the accountability, it's only a matter of time before you fall into bad ha uh, those old habits. I mean, that's human nature. Mm -hmm. so, um, so yeah, that accountability, that support, that brotherhood, it's, uh, it's what keeps us going. Awesome, good stuff. So you're here for, obviously you took a, a week out of your life to come back to experience this now from the other side of the lines and I'm, I'm telling you, you're going to get just as much or more out of it as a junior instructor. So I'm excited to see, you know, your growth, your continued growth just by being back here for another week. What's a few pieces of advice you'd have for the gentlemen that are about to come in as candidates as we start this next class that you're here to help out with? What are a few pieces of advice you'd have for them on getting through the, the project, but probably similar advice for them just to get through life? What, what would some of those things be? Well, um, I mean, I'd say the first thing is, you know, you have to make the decision to, uh, to continue. You have, you can't, you can't think about quitting. Um, if you think about quitting, then that's just eventually going to eat away at you over time. So, um, if, if you're doing the project, you have to come in with a determination that, you know, as, as we would say, you know, Hey, I'm either going to die or I'm going to pass, you know, I'm going to get through this or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can't, you can't think about ringing that bell because if you think about ringing that bell, um, you've already quit on yourself and, and you're, you're worth way more than, um, than the pain and the struggle of getting through the project. Good stuff. Good stuff. So how, how could the viewers out there find you on social media? Um, James Swift on Facebook, um, FBBC Rancho Cordova on Instagram. Um, yeah, you can follow along and, uh, we're always posting some inspirational stuff and just trying to change lives every single day. That's, that's our, uh, that's our mission. Awesome. Thanks for coming on the show. I, I'm excited to see your growth through these next few days and next few years and, and the rest of your life. So thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Of course. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Appreciate it. Awesome. This has been another episode of the MDK Project Show for men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith. If you know that's you or anything we just talked about resonated with you, please like, subscribe, add your comments down below, share this video with your friends, your family members, your coworkers, or even your fucking enemies. I will talk to you later. You are freaking awesome. No excuses.